turn to your engineering tab. Uh, you see at the very top there the wording from Exhibit A and the, uh, in red the amount of anticipated expenditure based on the 62.4 million. Uh, as you are aware, we have previously used SPLOS funds in conjunction with Department of Transportation funding, uh, and uh, we still will continue to do that uh, where possible. Uh, you will see the attached list is broken down uh, on the prioritization process that has previously been used. That's the availability of right away design maintenance cost, number of residents on a road, and whether or not that particular road is uh, a bus route. Um, if you turn the page, you will see the priority, proposed priority, uh, SPLOS 7 project list. This is the list that we have had for a number of years. There is a breakdown. Uh, for instance, when you look at item 12, the Madison Heights, there are 15 roads there, and then you will see a breakdown of each of those roads, totaling the length uh, of that project and whether or not it is ready, whether we are uh, in the process of obtaining uh, right away, and then the uh, estimated cost for each of those projects. Uh, that is the breakdown on that page as well as the next page. So if you will turn over to the uh, page, and I'm sorry these are not numbers, it says analysis plus uh, seven project list. This is the same breakdown on those projects with uh, whether or not it is paving a bridge or a bridge replacement or widening. You see the uh, list that tells whether or not you have right away <coughs> or how many are left to obtain actual number of parcels uh, on the project. Your average um, daily traffic where applicable if it is a bus route. If there are any future development plans anticipated for this area based on our uh, comp plan and whether or not it is a connector. The next item is an eight-year maintenance cost for that particular road, and then the estimated cost of the uh, project. Uh, it was, I think the chairman asked uh, why some of these projects might already have, in, uh, we have incurred design uh, cost where we may not have uh, right away, obtain right away. Uh, the reason for that is that in order to obtain the right away, we have to know how much we will need, and depending on the design of the road. Uh, it doesn't necessarily equate to an equal number of feet from both sides of the road. Uh, so that is why that expense is incurred prior to obtaining whether or not somebody is willing to give the right away. Um, and I'm not sure if that is a question that all of you have, but that's one that the chairman and I discussed. I have some questions about why we're still in this priority and analysis section. But if you need to finish your presentation, no, 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 go no, ahead. No, I, right I can do it at the end. No, sir. <clears throat> How, like on number 12, Madison Heights and number 23, Time Code, how do, first of all, I know this has been a working list for years and years, and you add to and take away, complete projects, put something else on there, but how and when is this list put together and updated? Since I have been here, um, Commissioner, this uh, is the list that we have been working from, and they have added to that list uh, as projects have come off. And um, who is the day? Is that the commission? Commission or previous commission? <clears throat> um, and again, they 
the previous boards have established the criteria that I just described to you. Um, about six years ago, um, when we were looking at SPLOST, um, the commission asked for a supplemental list to be prepared, which is also in your packet. That supplemental list was compiled of additional projects in anticipation of revenue in excess uh, of the anticipated $180 million. Well, and it, this is something I know I get the chairman with on a future day because we can bog down all day on, on, <laughs> on the road list, but um, I would like for us to visit this in detail as time comes on, it goes on to see if we need to reprioritize some of these. I, I have an issue with paving dead end streets with four, five, six houses on it when we would have roads that has thousands of cars going on each day. We may need the attention. I realize you get into it's cheaper to pave it than to maintain it over eight Sometimes years. That's that's the issue. Yeah, yeah, and you can see that in several of these columns here. You have an isolated road that's let's say two or three miles from um, another group of roads. You've got to take that road your equipment has got to drive an extra three, four miles right. to get to it just to grade it. So sometimes you have to I thought big much pleasure about that too. You know, you, you got to balance out. You know, is it cost effective to keep sending graders and dump trucks and all that down there to maintain the dirt road and over time it's cheaper to pave it than it is to um, to continue to maintain it like it is. But you gotta balance that with a need uh, like some of these roads and bridges that um, are actually used more, especially if it's a, a cut through road or thoroughfare where you've got uh, like Valdell there, 5,668 5, cars a day. Yeah. Let, um, let me say this, um, and, and of course I, I have looked at the list as well, and I have also, just as you have, you know, I've questioned some of it. But when you, when you really kind of begin to get the thing the process through, this list, the priority list, has been a list that, of course, has been developed over a lot of years. Um, every one of these citizens that's living on this on these roads, to some degree, I'm not going to say has had a commitment, but when their commissioner that was representing them at that time made the recommendation, they didn't just go out there and pick a road. They made a recommendation because the citizens living on that road had did had done their due diligence about contacting their commissioners at the time about getting their road paid. So when we take a road off the list, you're also going to take away a commitment that may have already been made to other citizens. So there's a lot of good, there's a lot of thought that needs to go into it before we just go in there and start destroying, you might say, a priority list. There are pieces, you know, like you say, little lanes or something like that that needs to be considered and could be looked at. But again, they, the whole purpose of the list is as I have come to understand, it's, it's a grow. It's a, it's an ongoing list. It's a commitment that your predecessors has made to citizens, and there are citizens that you now represent that lives on these roads as well. You know, in times change, needs change. I can't help what previous commissioners did, unless we're contractually bound. I understand you have to consider all that. When you look at a road that has, you know, a significant amount of traffic, or if it's school bus traffic especially. Um, I'm going to have to think long and hard about Mr. Chairman, uh, I leaning towards money putting on a, a road that's got six houses when there might be 50 or 60 houses on another road and it's a, and it's a pass through road. I've gotten questions even yesterday just walking into shoe repair shop. Uh, you know, why are we paving these old dead end streets and why is that a focus? When we spend millions of dollars going into the neighborhoods that built neighborhoods on dirt streets when they were there and understood that. And uh, now we won't ask to go in and pay those streets and leave other roads that, uh, like Board Pond, I know we've been working on that for years and I know we hope we're seeing light at the end of the tunnel. You have roads like that all over the county that have a lot of traffic and a lot of people live on. Well, you have to weigh the cost over the over the need and that's well, I hear you, but I mean, it's, it's no different than you and I 
you know, this was a dirt road when I moved out here on it. That's right. It was a dirt road when you That's moved right. on but that don't mean that you still don't want to get the road paved at some right. point in time. So to, to use the analogy that uh, that a subdivision was was built on dirt roads and folks bought on dirt roads is not necessarily a good enough reason to say we don't need to pay that <coughs> road. I know at one point in time some of these subdivisions, the roads when the subdivisions were put in years ago, the standards for a road the county would accept dirt roads that were put in to county standards. So you have everything now all the right of ways and everything are there. The standards have changed over the years to where the county will not accept anything other than a paved road that's built by county standards. And we grandfathered in those other well they were there. Those yeah. Those layers. yeah, they were just there. So those the, the, the thing about those is that if that subdivision <coughs> was put in today, all the roads would have had to been that would have had to been uh, uh, paved roads. Mm -hmm. uh, so telling the folks that lives on those roads that they bought on a dirt road is, at, at that time, sure they did, but they bought on a road that was built to county standards at that time. Right. Mr. Chairman, if I could make a suggestion I think might be helpful. Um, I think the last thing we want to do is go in and start arbitrarily moving roads around based on whatever criteria each individual commissioner has, but what might be helpful is if engineering could provide us with a list of maybe the top ten criteria that's used. Give those give commissioners that list and let each commissioner prioritize those criteria. So the most important thing to me might be safety. The most important thing, Commissioner uh, Page, might be um, number of houses on the road. Let us prioritize that list, and that way we are not arbitrarily just changing because there's souls that live on all these roads that, like you say, have expectations. So it may just be yeah. best for us to prioritize the criteria, and then that way engineering can take an take that list and objectively move roads that need to be moved. And we, what we may find at the end of that is that the list essentially stays yeah. the same. We already, by their standards, we have a, a partial prioritized priority issues that they use to, to um, move the roads up as well. So with that, certainly we could add some other aspects to it and then have them readjust the list. I agree with Richard. I think it's a good idea. And, you know, it's something because none of us here know what the day-to-day -day things are like the engineering and public works and I think it's a good idea that I don't want to go through and just say trash list and do it all over I know we can't do that but you know at least uh, since we have new commissioner and a new chairman and a uh, new SPLOS you know to, to revisit this list some of these have been on there for years and years and uh, you know reevaluate and another thing you know, to look at is um, Placing a bridge over paving a road, that bridge may be so dangerous or narrow that it's almost close to school bus traffic, it might take, take priority over paving a road somewhere else. And I don't want to get bogged down on yeah. that. I know we need to move on, but I think that's what we're asking there. I agree with. We ought to have them, you know, give us some criteria. Well, good. Again, you, again the, the whole purpose of this that. meeting is to is to bring out the issues and the concerns that each one of the commissioners has requesting the information just such as that so that when we, as we move forward um, into, into basically into next year we will be better prepared to be making some of these decisions. So that's, that'll be fine. If you'll turn to the next 